Okay, so this is a video on um, hierarchical multiple regression. We're going to perform a hierarchical multiple regression. Um, please don't confuse this with the procedure, the statistical procedure called uh, entitled hierarchical linear modeling, sometimes referred to as HLM. It's a very, very different procedure. HLM is really uh, a modeling, leveled modeling, uh, which allows you to do regression across many different levels. Um, that's what HLM is. This is not HLM. This is hierarchical multiple regression. It's just another uh, form of uh, multiple regression. Anyway, we're using the same um, SPSS file as we used before. SPSS for YouTube underscore version 2. Again, if this is the first video you've looked at, whenever you're given a new data set, um, it's always smart to take a look at under file, display data file information, working file, the output you get will tell you all of the variables within that SPSS data file. Um, and the second table will tell you the variable values. This is very important for coding. Um, so for example, in this uh, data set, uh, there's, a, there's a variable called tutoring. If the student was coded zero, they weren't in the program. If they were coded one, they were in the tutoring program. Um, gender, males are coded zero, females are coded one. Ethnicity, uh, other is coded zero, white is coded one, uh, free and reduced lunch, which is a level of socioeconomic status, a zero are kids who are not on free and reduced lunch, one is for children who are on free and reduced lunch. It's important to know these codes so when you interpret the SPSS output, you can interpret the SPSS output accurately. Um, anyway, we're going to perform a hierarchical multiple regression and we're going to use the same variables that uh, I used in the simultaneous multiple regression model uh, with the exception that this time we're going to put each of the variables in separately as a step or a block. So in order to perform this regression analysis you simply go to analyze. You s click on analyze and the drop down menu appears you scroll down and select regression. When that appears another menu pops up you select linear. Again, on the left side are all of your variables, the variables that um, <clears throat> are in the data set. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to answer the same question we answered for the multiple, the simultaneous multiple regression model. In other words, uh, the predictor variables that uh, best predict grade 11 uh, language arts literacy performance. Uh, specifically, what we're looking for is it, the relationship between years in a tutoring program and performance on the grade 11 LAL. Does the years in a tutoring program significantly predict uh, student performance in the grade 11 uh, in the grade 11 language arts literacy um, when we control for gender, uh, absenteeism, and socioeconomic status or free and reduced lunch status? So our Dependent variable here is year, is uh, is the grade 11 language arts literacy assessment. So I'm going to highlight that, hit the arrow right before the dependent window, and it will place that variable in there. Now, now I'm going to input uh, my variables, but I'm going to do that one at a time in a um, in a step or block sort of fashion. Um, and uh, typically, the way we do this is we usually let the literature um, literature guide us in what the variables that are important um, and uh, which ones that I might want to put in first. Typically there are two ways to do this. One way is to put your variable of interest, years in a tutoring program, in first and then second you'd follow it up with the demographic variables like gender, free and reduced lunch. The other way to do it is in reverse is to put the demographic variables in first a step at a time and then leave your variable of interest in this case years and tutoring program for the last step and that's what we're going to do in this case so what I'm going to first put in is uh, gender so I'm going to highlight gender in the left hand box I'm going to go over to the independent window here I'm going to hit the arrow and it'll place gender in what I do now is is I click the next button notice now genders disappeared. I go and I find my second variable. In this case it's going to be absenteeism. I select that 
I click the arrow next to the independent box. It goes in. I again click the next button. For my third step or my third block, I'm going to put in free and reduced lunch, which is a form of socioeconomic status. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to go over to the block three of three over here. I'm going to click it and it goes in. I'm going to click next and block four of four. This is my last block, my fourth step. I'm going to select the years in a tutoring program and I'm going to place it into uh, the window. Now, I do not click next at this point. Again, let me repeat that. I do not click next. Right now, we've created a four step hierarchical multiple regression. What I do now is I click my statistics button. The window pops up. Again, model fit estimates are default selections. I'm going to select everything that I selected in the simultaneous multiple regression, which was descriptives, part partial correlation, collinearity diagnostics, and Durbin-Watson. However, I'm going to add the R square change command. I then click continue and then I click OK. My output pops up. Again, the very first table is the descriptive statistics table, which is going to look exactly like the descriptive statistics table in the simultaneous multiple regression that we ran in the previous video. Again, the average at grade 11 language arts literacy score is 239.23, almost 240, 40 points above um, what's considered proficient. The correlation table, then the model or models, the variables entered and removed. You can see in model one, we entered gender. In model two, we entered absenteeism. In model three, we entered free and reduced lunch. And in the last model, we, we entered our model of interest, our variable of interest years in the tutoring program. Now remember, as I move from one model to the next model, the previous variable carries over. So model one, the only variable is gender. In model two, it's going to be gender and absence. In model three, gender, absence, free and reduced lunch. And in model four, all four of the variables, including our variable of interest, will then be in, in here. Our model summary table is going to look a little bit different because we have four models. We're going to get an R square for model one, an R square for model two, an R square for model three, and an R square for model four. And as you can see, model one, when we just had gender, and if you notice beneath the model summary table, it shows you how the variables were entered for each model. A would be model one, B would be model two, C would be model three. Gender, the R square is zero. Okay, and if you remember, it was not statistically significant. It has no um, impact or influence on the outcome variable, which is the grade 11 LAL. In model two, we entered gender and absenteeism. And now my R square comes up to 0 0.061, 6.1% of grade 11 LAL can be explained by gender and absenteeism. That is statistically significant. Okay, and you'll notice that the R square change here is 0 0.061. That's how much we increased the R square. In the third model, I have gender absenteeism freezing to reduce lunch. 0 0.062, so now it's 6.2%. However, the R square change is less than a percent, 0.1%. And actually, the move from model two to model three was not a statistically significant move. From model one to model two was a statistically significant move, but from model two to model three, it was not statistically significant. And lastly, in model four, my R square is 0.111 or 11.1 percent. So when I have all four variables in, included in the model in model four, 11.1 percent of the variability in student performance in grade 11 LAL can be explained. And moving from model three to model four was statistically significant. And look at the R square changed. It was a five percent change in the R square moving from model three to model four. We were at a 5% change. Next thing I go to is the ANOVA table. It actually performs an ANOVA on each model separately. 
So model one, which only included gender, was not statistically significant. Model two, which concluded gender and absenteeism, was statistically significant. Model three, which included gender, absenteeism, and free and reduced lunch, was statistically significant. And regression, and model four, which included gender, absenteeism, free and reduced lunch, and years in a tutoring program, was statistically significant. I then took a take a look at the coefficients table and it has the coefficients for each model. Model 1, gender is not statistically significant. Model 2, absenteeism is significant, significant but not gender. Model 3, gender absenteeism and free and reduced lunch. Um, absenteeism is the only statistically significant variable. And model 4, is gender free uh, is absenteeism and years in the tutoring program as a matter of fact if you look at model four and you go back to look at the simultaneous multiple regression model uh, in the previous video you'll see that basically almost all the values are identical okay so why do we why do we do this there's many reasons why we can do a hierarchical uh, multiple regression model predominantly what we want to do is, is we want to see the change in the variability explained um, which is explained by r square as we move from model to model putting in or inputting more variables as we move from model to model uh, the other reason we do this is, is we can see with our variable of interest since we left that be the last variable precisely how much it actually impacts um, the overall models so when we got to model three here looking at the model summary table when we got to model three we had gender absenteeism free and reduced lunch we had 6.2 percent of the variability in grade 11 explained by model three okay when we added in our variable of interest years in a tutoring program we had a r square change of 0 0.050 or five percent so that the entire model now explained 11.1 percent so what we were saying here or what we can say here is that years in a tutoring program added an additional explanation of the variance by 5%. It had a value added of roughly 5%, which is actually quite large and would be quite an interesting, uh, would be quite interesting to discuss in your findings. Uh, the other, one of the other reasons we do a, a higher, uh, is we do a hierarchical multiple regression is to actually identify, you know, what's the best model here. Now, it just so happens that our best model is model number four primarily because it explains the most amount of variance in our outcome or dependent variable 11.1 percent it explains so it would tell us that model four is really our best model um, but that's a hierarchical uh, multiple regression again not to be confused with a hierarchical linear modeling or HLM and it's a good way when you're specifically focused on a variable of interest like we are here in the years in a tutoring program it's a good way to make a determination of hey how much of the variability in student performance in the grade 11 LAL can be accounted for by years in a tutoring program specifically how much variability can be accounted for by years in a tutoring program when we control for gender absenteeism and free and reduced lunch or in other words, variables that ha also influence grade 11 LEL. In this case, we found out that roughly 5% um, that years in a tutoring program contributes roughly 5% in the variability in student performance in grade 11 uh, language arts literacy when we control uh, for other student demographic variables.